crimping tool to do that. It makes it easier. I'm going to overdo it. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we're now going to try it to see if I can get something to work that I haven't done in a long, long time. This is for spreading uh, glue oh, right to for the on, on tiles. Yeah. It's half of one, actually. That makes sense. Easier to hold. No, see, the thing that's useful about this tool is, is that once I get started, exactly. size it could be easier somewhat, not just a half of the... Mm -hmm. No, because it doesn't bend. Uh, so it doesn't, um, it doesn't fit around the piece. Yeah. That's true. If you had something that fit around the piece, that would be easier. I mean, it would be easier in a sense, if I was using the smaller ones, because I'd be able to get more cuts mm -hmm. per. Now you're missing a couple of strips. Yeah, I can see it's, it's this ain't going to survive. So you're going to kill it? Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's got a bend. Something isn't right in there. Is that an uneven uh, wetness? No, uh, there's somewhere, I've got a thin spot. Ah. And I gotta go figure out what's going on with this, but. I don't know how many you get these, but I don't know. You go! You gotta go! Oh. When it gets flatter, it seems like harder than uh, the vertical. Yeah. Yeah. It's harder because it's, it's not, you know, it's not a particularly easy yeah. but process. But this is you're not supposed to press it too much anyway. Yeah, are you, you pressing? Press it yeah, you are. Uh huh. Yeah, because this is trimming as opposed to making a mark. Another, you know, making a mark by just indenting. We're really trimming off. Uh -huh. So really, what would be wonderful if it, instead of those little square things, you have little wire squares. Yeah. Little well, like trim tools like in a row. row. We could, yes, like bind four trim tools in a row. Oh, like the little way little you do with the Japanese brushes. Oh, brushes right, yeah. the Chinese brushes. Yeah. Right. Oh. I'm all back. Make
So what we would do is we'd, we'd clean it up, you know, go along and... With your hands or with the squishing? Oh, both. You know, I'm going to do some cleanup like this, just like doing that. And then I'll probably go back over it to really clean things down a little bit. Like this. You know, to get these edges nice, nice. Because what I've been doing is, is I've been just, you know, getting it cut, and now I can go back in and and um, then it would just be, you know, let it dry, and uh, what about the bottom? Well, we'll deal with the bottom bottom. You know, we'd undercut it, probably leave it for a little bit. I might do it tonight because it's actually in really good shape. Trim the bottom. I need to trim the bottom. I think I'd just bring it right in. I don't want to do anything fancy schmancy. Because why should I? Yeah, it must have just gotten off center or something. It's just really thin right now. Um, but basically, the whole thing is, is that it, it fits. I mean, it's not a it's not a problem. Those ridges are what there already? No, I think it just got. I think press. right in here, it was a little bit. It was a little thin. Uh huh. It's like it's thick down. It's it's right uh -huh. just right uh -huh. down here. It was a little thin right in here. And you know, this is where I was trimming to to even to it out. It. Uh -huh. So what I ended up doing was I ended up trimming away too much, which is the problem. So. like screw threads. Which is too bad, because it would have been a nice job. Mm -hmm. But there you go. Mm -hmm. It's like the hat that Devo wore, too. <laughs> Put it on. No, I didn't mean there. Put on your head. It's a nice way to make a jar, because it does mean that that if if you work it right, that you get this beautiful, invisible line, yeah. which is really sweet. So. But not this one. Twelve and a half pounds of clay.